Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video. Another Mr. Bad's Meets the Hit Squad uh, collection vid. Um, yeah, it's been quite an interesting journey thus far with a bit of support from other fellow YouTubers along the way. The likes of David Retro Games Play Badly he's given me free games. So far I've shown just the one. So every time I come across them, I will shout these people out. And Sega Zombie recently sent me a game. Which again doesn't feature in this particular video, but I'd just like to acknowledge the fact that it's fantastic that there's people out there who are helping, sort of helping me in my quest for a full set Hit Squad collection. But yeah, so doing quite well, I've got to say, and I'm probably going to hit a wall now. I think I'm not a million miles off 100 games. Uh, I would say 94, maybe 95 at the moment. But the games I'm missing are the games you would expect me to be missing, but I'm missing a few more simpler to pick up titles as well. About three or four games like Zybots, which has eluded me so far. It's not a particularly rare game. Uh, License to Kill, another one that's not um, that hard to get, but they are listed on eBay now, but probably about four, three or four times more than what they probably valued at. Um, but yeah, I do have a few nice titles in the collection so far. A few games I've not seen since I got them, which is great. And I've picked up a few games from the chap down the road who used to have the world's biggest Sinclair Spectrum collection. Um, again, nothing uber rare, just games that are quite difficult to find, so it's quite nice to pick them up. And like I said before, it's, sometimes it's worth paying the additional couple of quid to save your time, really, in sitting at the computer screen looking for uh, games that just don't flip and come up. So yeah, I've got another 11 to show you. Um, a lot of these games I have no real nostalgia for, probably maybe three. Uh, some of the nostalgia will stem back from magazine advertising. But when you play the games now, they're a bit grim. So I always find that if, you, if you're playing an old game that you've never played before and play it for the first time, you generally don't look at it in, in the right light and it can play quite bad. Obviously the games that you remember and have fond memories with and you loved them back in the day, you still love today. It's strange, isn't it, really, how it works out. But yeah, so getting quite a few duplicates building up at the minute as you can see but I don't think I've got anything that the other guys don't have but yeah I uh, picked up a few bits and bobs when I went to the Bristol gaming market uh, there was nothing there for the Sinclair Spectrum unfortunately so I picked up a few Amstrad titles um, which I've now since moved on to other hit squad collectors who are the thing with the Amstrad I suppose the Amstrad's got to be the hardest of the three to collect for it really is I mean I've very rarely see any sort of even definitely never seen any of the top end stuff on the Amstrad uh, I've not seen much in the way of the stuff sort of the tier 2 stuff really come up it's very hard especially if, if there's multiple Amstrad collectors out there for the hit squad they're going to flip in be paying through the nose to pick up those last few games the Commodore 64 is a bigger library it's got games in it like Lethal Weapon Hook WWF European like European Rampage, which, are, which never came out in the other two. But I see them more, and they're bloody obscure, than I do the obscure Spectrum and Amstrad titles. So yeah, the Amstrad seems the more difficult. The Commodore 64 has got the more pricier titles in it, to be fair. But the Spectrum one, yeah, again, it's, I'm finding it very difficult to find those last few. But anyway, enough about that. What we're doing now is crack on with the 11. Starting off with something that uh, I would never have used back in the day. It's the second title I've got out of three. That's Fun School 2. This one's for the six to eight year olds. Probably a bit too uh, complex for my fragile little mind to comprehend. So there's three in the series. I now have two, which you've already seen in the previous video, if you've watched it. A bit presumptuous of me. But there's a blue one missing. So you've got the red, green, and blue. Now the blue one was on eBay, and someone bought it. So that's a flipping git. But it was up for about 15 quid. And the guy lives down the road. So I should have picked it up really, but I hesitated. Never mind. So yeah, so I'm, I'm waiting for the last one, which I think is definitely the more obscure of the three. Now the next game I have memories of, um, mostly for a magazine. Uh, I remember seeing the screenshots of the game on that advert, but I do remember really liking what I was seeing because at the time I had a Sinclair Spectrum and as you know most games didn't have a lot of colours. So when I saw this particular game I thought wow it looks bloody amazing. That's Crazy Cars. Now this is a very early arcade release at number three. 
And most of the ones I think I've got in this video are quite early arcade cassettes. And again, they are or can be found in abundance. Now the Spectrum version looks decent enough. It, it runs really quickly, but it has kind of Commodore 64 syndrome where the car kind of slides across the flipping road. It feels like there's nothing kind of, there's no resistance. It literally goes across the road. And there's very few cars to overtake. It's very little in the way of scenery. You can imagine what a game so um, quick, really. It's not very in, a very inspiring game. But yeah, I think you can drive as three or four different cars. I, I got quite far in it in my first go. I think I got as far as like stage four or something. But it's one of those time-based games, you're up against the clock. But I just found it very uninspiring. But number three on the Amiga is flipping awesome. Right, next up is another game I didn't play back in the day. I did play the sequel. And that's Match Day. Classic Ocean Software game. This is uh, Sports number 10. Again, another very common title. Now, I played the second one. I remember it being very, very good, but very, very slow. Now, a lot of old football games back in the day, all you had to do to get the balls running to the opposing player. Now, I had difficulty doing that in this. Don't know why. There's no sliding tackles. So I couldn't flip into a professional foul. It was a shame, really. And I didn't, wasn't quick enough to get in front of the player to get the flipping ball. And I've never scored a goal in match day. Bit of a sad uh, state of affairs, really. But yeah, a good game to have. Probably an excellent game for its time. But certainly one I don't remember playing. But like I said, I played the sequel. So that's match day. Again, another cheap and cheerful game. Might set you back more than a couple of quid. Now the next one's a little bit more obscure. Um, it's a arcade conversion, or an arcade conversion. Get that right. That's Quartet. Now this was part of a bundle. I can't remember how many games I picked up within that particular bundle. So it wouldn't have cost me a lot. I've got quite a few of my games from bundles. Um, unfortunately, I'm still sat on the games that they came with. This is arcade number nine, but like I said, quite obscure. I don't remember much about it back in the day, apart from the artwork. I don't think it sold particularly well. That's one of those games I couldn't really play or work out how to play because I couldn't work out how to play just one player. Maybe that's not possible. So I loaded it up, there's two players, a bit like flipping um, uh, Micro Machines, where if you go quicker than the previous play, he's kind of stuck up there somewhere. That's kind of what happens with that. But when the player gets stuck at the edge of the screen, so do you. So I couldn't really progress, to be honest. I haven't got a flipping clue what it's about. But a game that doesn't come up very often, this one may probably cost around five quid. Maybe a little bit more, I don't really know, to be honest. But I'll guess about five pound if you're interested. But yeah, good to have it in the collection, though. Now, next up is a game, again, I never played. I played the one before it, I played the one after it, and I loved the one before it, especially. That's Daily Thompson Super Test. Now, this game was written by two different programmers. Uh, Jonathan Smith done half the game, and I think Paul Owens done the other half the game. But yeah. I'm not very good at it. Now, this has taken inspiration from many different games like Winter Olympics, um, Hypersports being the other one, which was another Jonathan Smith game. That's uh, Sports number 11. Again, another one that comes up pretty frequently. Um, I just found it hard. The old waggling technique is certainly dying off in my old age. But I did one of the events really well, and then by the time I got to the second event, I was flipping knackered. But yeah, it's not a bad little game, but I would like to see how all the events compare, because obviously two different programmers might have two different ideas of how a particular event plays out. So that's Super Test, again another dirt cheap game. Next up is International Karate Plus, a game I had on my Atari ST. One of my favourite fighting games. It's, for me, I'm not really a keen fan of 1v1 fighters, or 1v2 fighters in this case. But I make an exception to this. Now the Sinclair Spectrum conversion was surprisingly very good. Uh, all the animation seems to be there. I just, I think I used the wrong control method while I was playing it because I wasn't very good at it. I wasn't I, I was flipping through what I was doing. I was kind of bouncing across the screen one minute and then flipping gyrating across it the next minute without actually hitting much. This is sports number eight. A cracking little conversion, I've got to say. The background looked nice, all in colour. Foregrounds in monochrome. But yeah, I was more impressed with the way it plays and its animation. But yeah, love the game on the ST though. Flipping classic. 
that's IK plus again don't come up that often but not an expensive game by any means now next up is another trilogy or part of another trilogy I've got the first and this one and I'm waiting for the middle one in the post that is Star Wars Return of the Jedi my only nostalgic memory from this I think it's from either CVG or Sinclair User Magazine uh, I played it for a bit I wasn't particularly that impressed I've got to say for some reason there's some, some random teddy bears kind of lined up in the flipping path or in your way and you just start off on your little speeder whatever you call it go through the level and every now and then you'll get chased by another speeder which you try and dodge and then it crashes into a tree that's about the excitement of the game I was probably more excited to see the little teddy bears to be honest uh, again this one I'm not sure which is the most common of the Star Wars games I think the two um, sort of vector graphics games are probably more common than this one uh, again this was part of a bundle again so I don't know what it would have cost me by the time I sold on the other bits and bobs I'm pleased to have it though it's not one I would recommend and this is movie number 12 <clears throat> Well, next up is a classic Spectrum game. Well, in fact, it came out in the Commodore 64 first, but I know a lot of people love it. I've just never sat and read the instructions to work out what I'm supposed to flipping do in a game. That's Whizball. The amount of times I've said that in pickup videos, I've picked it up on a couple of different systems. Another quite common game, Arcade Number 4. But yeah, I mean, I just bounce across the screen. I've got no idea what I'm supposed to be flipping doing. One day, I'll just take the instructions out and have a bloody read. But yeah, it's, it's probably an excellent game. I'm just crap at it. Every time I bounce somewhere, I bounce on the wrong bloody thing. An enemy's head or down some chute and end up somewhere I don't want to be. But yeah, again, quite an easy game to get, I've got to say. Really nice to have it in the collection, but I will one day actually work out how to play it. Right, well, free to go. Now, next up is probably the most costliest game in this pile. Uh, certainly, quite a difficult one to get. I did show it in a pickup video probably about three months ago now. That game is Skate Wars. Now, another sports game. This is number 18. Uh, there's probably one or two sports games that are a bit more difficult to get than this. Now, again, I remember this one from Sinclair User Magazine. Um, when I played it a couple of months ago though it's one of those games that's probably better playing it with a human opponent because again it's one of those games you run in front of the player to get the ball and you're supposed to go down the other end of the flipping pitch and score a goal it's not quite as easy as that because every time I get the ball I flip and lose it when you push the button you do some kind of weird jump kick which does nothing so I'm not quite sure what they to do again this one set me back oh, I'm going to say £12 maybe £15 I got it from Retro Cabin uh, when I went through a bit of a spell of buying loads of these games online. But it is a nice one to have in the collection anyway. I think I'm only one left away from a complete sports set. And the one I'm after, I don't even think should live in the bloody sports section, but how bizarre. But yeah, Skate Wars. Right, next up, the next two have nostalgic memories. Now, when I was picking through these games, I could either pick out all my favourite games, which is what I would be tempted to do, but what happened is I'll have all my favourite games in about three or four videos, and three or four videos of utter tripe. So I'm going to try and mix them up a bit just to make it a bit interesting. But I don't want to have a video that just contains all the hard to get titles and all the easy titles. So I want to try and get the whole thing mixed up. So next up is a racing game. For its time, it was probably the best racing game on the spectrum. That would have been about mid 87, and that's Enduro Racer. I absolutely love this game when I was younger. The 128k music, yeah, it's a bit jarring now when you listen to it, but at the time it was a bit of a novelty. There weren't too many games that had AY chip music during a game. Now, it's a flipping hard game. Now, I'm pretty sure when I had it originally, I could complete it. Now, thinking back to it, I'm not 100% sure. I'm playing it now, I'm probably definitely flipping not sure. I can get up the first level easy enough, but the second level, especially the beginning part of it, it's weird because you've got rocks in the middle of the road. You can't even jump over them, you just slam straight into them. And every now and then you have a random tree appear. But then when you do get to the jumps and jump these little rocks, it's difficult you end up in the side of the flipping road. So yeah, I can't get off the second level at the minute, but it's a cracking little game, a very cheap one to pick up. But I can't remember who gave it to me years ago. 
Which in fact, is actually the first arcade game. Uh, on Hit Squad label, but I can't remember who gave it to me years ago, but I absolutely loved it. I remember that. And it wasn't until the, well, that year, when Super Hang On came out, for a better racing game. There you go. That's the Enduro Racer. Now next up is the final game, and it's probably the best game of the bunch for me. I remember getting this. Sorry, I didn't get it. A good friend of mine, David, his older brother gave him a big bag of Spectrum games, and in that big bag of Spectrum games were some right classics like Daily Thompson's Decathlon, Muggsy, Cobra, and this little puppy. And this is Green Beret. Again, another common title. But what a game it is. Another Jonathan Smith title as well. He was some programmer for his day. Cracking little conversion, this. This is arcade number two. Uh, but yeah, I remember my mate getting this bag of games, and when I come across this, I absolutely loved it. It's one of those games where, you, if you play it with a joystick, you've got to reach over to the keyboard and push space to use the old um, special weapon. But I prefer playing it with keyboard, because you, you use space bar as well to shoot or to stab, and then you use your little pinky there to uh, push enter to use the special weapon. I could get to about level... I think I've been to level 4 once, but this game is brutally hard. I can usually do the first couple of levels okay, and it gets bloody hard. But it's all about timing, but I do have very fond memories of this one, because it's one of the earliest games I had when I got my 48k+, Plus, based on the fact that my friend had this, this bag of games. And I never remember seeing it in magazines or anything, because I didn't have a computer at the time of, of this getting a release, but it's an absolutely fantastic game. That's it. That's all we've got to show you for this particular video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to keep trying to do these once a month because they will eventually run out at some point. Uh, it's becoming very difficult now to uh, pick up any more games. I've got one more on the way. But all the games I would like to get, like what other people would like to get as well. Uh, games like Space Gun is a really difficult one to get hold of. Hudson Hawk, because I've never seen that one come up before. Um, I know David's Retro Games Play Badly has Skull and Crossbones, another really good game to get hold of. Obviously Sega Zombie has a copy of Darkman as well, which is probably the second most difficult game to pick up, or certainly the second most um, desirable titles. It does, it does fetch a, a fair few quid. So there's still those to pick up. Um, like I said, one away from a complete sports set, one away from picking up the fun school set, one away from the... Or one of the two away from the um, board game set. Uh, the one I've got most to do on is probably the arcade. It is the single biggest part of it. But yeah, but like I said, we should be quite grateful that the Spectrum Hit Squad collection isn't as difficult to get as the Amstrad and probably not as costly as the Commodore 64. This Commodore 64 version is quite large. Well, not massively large, but when you're looking for games like Lethal Weapon, which can probably cost well over a ton to buy, it's a very expensive. Uh, uh, set to go for, but I thought about getting some of the exclusives for the Commodore 64, but I probably won't bother at the moment. I will do it in the future. I'd love to have a copy of Lethal Weapon, so I've got it on box on the Ocean Collection. But yeah, so I'm going off on a tangent now, so I'm going to close the video. Hope you enjoyed the video anyway. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. And I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care. Goodbye for now.